Hey, what up you guys? So, welcome back to the channel, Drawing with Michael. It has been a little bit of a time since I made a video that was not a review, so today I'm just going to show you what I've been working on in my private time. So here is a sketch that I did of a character that I've been developing called Edgar the Terrible. It sounds <laughs> much worse than it is. It's actually kind of the opposite. Edgar the Terrible is terrible at everything. He aspires to be a martial arts master, and yet he's terrible. He makes poor decisions, and he can't seem to gain a foothold in the martial arts world. And he's trying to find his purpose, and it's kind of that journey of who he is. He's actually a cat, so you would think that a cat is very nimble and very good at martial arts, but Edgar the Terrible... You know, people think, oh, Edgar the Terrible's coming, he's gonna just wipe everybody out. But in actuality, it's completely the opposite. It's actually humorous. So, what I've done, and you can see I'm working in Photoshop today. I use Photoshop a lot because I've got a myriad of brushes in my archive here. I also use Clip Studio Paint quite a bit, Painter, as well as... Um, Sketchbook Pro and some of those other programs that really cater towards people who draw, and that's what I do. So, as you can see, I've actually <clears throat> I've actually uh, started going in and revising my sketch. So, I'm going to go ahead and choke this down the opacity. That's my original. We're going to go down to probably about 45 or 40 percent, and then I started putting in some of the line work. And I started putting in the line work in a, another program. And you can see, just if I go ahead and eliminate, you can see the different very the the different style of the line work that's there. <coughs> and as I progressed, I just decided, you know what? <laughs> I like the sketchiness. It's kind of my the the way that you know my stuff feels and I really like that. So I've got my <clears throat> sketch brush here and I'm working on my uh, XP pen tablet today and I'm working of course I said in Photoshop and let me see what else working on my Mac I'm not working on a PC. Um, what am I doing? I'm going in and I'm just kind of evaluating and looking at the rhythm and flow of the piece, making sure that I have all the anatomical things correct. You know, then, you know, I'll go back and I'll start putting in some of these folds. And I'm not tracing. That's one of the things that I need to convey is it's not a trace job. I'm going in and I'm changing certain things to cater to the narrative, right? So maybe this stick isn't completely straight. Maybe it's got some little nicks here and there. Maybe at one point there's a crack in it. So that's, you know, his staff, weapon, whatever you want to call it. And that's basically what I'm doing. Um, and again, you know, just having some fun going in and looking and, and zooming in and out, you know, like this little area right here. Let me see, it comes here. I'm gonna have that thumb kind of come around. I've got this claw, this fur, and his hand is reaching over. So you're gonna have this little bit of fur come here and there. Let me see. Let's zoom out. It's important you always zoom out because it gives you a little bit better perspective. And, and if you're zoomed in all the time, focusing on one area, then eventually you're going to zoom out and say, oh my gosh, I've been working in the wrong area. I've been doing things incorrectly. It's out of balance. It's just not working. So that's why you'll see me zoom out. Occasionally I'll work, I'll work, I'll zoom out, and then I'll come back. And, you know, I'm doing this for your benefit most of the time up here. On my second monitor, I've actually got the drawing enlarged so I can see it. So I'll just go up and I'll reference that to make it a little bit easier on myself so I don't have to basically get vertigo every single time I draw. Because you zoom in and out and it's like, holy crap! 
it makes your brain explode, <laughs> right? Okay, drawing this circle, being the counterbalance, weight to the staff. Okay, <clears throat> he's just running, running and probably gonna fall in just a moment because of his, uh, his clumsiness. Who is Edgar the Terrible? Edgar the Terrible. <laughs> is the son of a 10th generation martial arts master. So you can understand why there's that want and need to be something. Okay, so let's come around here. Let's have the back of his Okay. All right, so let's have that really big come around. He wears this outfit that is very large. Oh, God. And he's got this outfit that really moves and flows and 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 depending on you know what he's doing at the time really just it, it's one of those things that I designed as a squash and stretch item so to help aid in in the dynamic uh, movement of this character so maybe I'll have this particular let's go back I'll come around it'll be a little bit more you know all this moving right instead of just being a solid form it is a organic kind of an organic form you know it actually becomes part of his character muse so as i develop him <clears throat> and as i move forward you know maybe he uses his outfit as an actual weapon um <laughs> i don't know you know maybe even you know i go so far as saying he wants to be this martial arts master, but instead he's kind of a uh, a clown. You know, what's the root? What is the root of who he is as a character? You know, and it's it's at the opposite of what I'm. You know, what he wants to be, which is a respected martial arts master, but in actuality he's a clown. He's got this huge outfit. You know, he trips over it all the time, and he can't figure out why he can't keep his balance. He's embarrassed. But then, you know, all he has to basically do is get rid of the outfit, and 90% of his issues will go away. Okay, so let's go back. So this is what I was talking about. So as you look, and he's moving forward this direction, okay, you're going to have, whoops, I'm using this device right now so if I kind of mess up a little bit occasionally it's still I'm still learning the device um, it's called uh, the Neo it's kind of like a quick key I did a review on my channel and of course you can click that review and watch it it's a cool device um, but I still you know I'm at I'm at going on two weeks two and a half weeks and I'm, I'm just about gotten where I you know I can use it daily but I still, I mean, I still have to have my keyboard. But anyway, like I was saying, so if you see me go like this and then it goes like this, it's because it doesn't have a complete undo um, key. It does have an undo key, but it just messes, it just messes up. Which is, it just messes everything up. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing now, <laughs> like I said, <coughs> what I'm doing now Go ahead and get back. And I was talking about his outfit and how it moves. So he's moving this direction, right? So his outfit's going to move this direction. So 
think one of the things that I learned, um, I had a really cool job with Cartoon Network for a very short stint. It was a freelance gig, and I did uh, I did character poses and model sheets um, whenever I first graduated college uh, for Powerpuff Girls and Scooby Doo. So I had to learn how to draw Scooby Doo really fast. That was fun, you know. And then uh, I had to learn how to draw the Powerpuff Girls. And one of the things that always, I don't know why, maybe it's just because I was so green. Um, one of the things that always stuck with me was one of the, on one of their uh, character sheets, they had um, the legs of the Powerpuff Girls. So the Powerpuff Girls, you know, you've got this, then you've got the legs you know, like this, so on and so forth. So this part right here being the end of the leg always fascinated me. Here, So right to the left of this, they had a little comparison and they basically equated it to a loaded sock. Maybe the sock has some, you know, uh, flower in it. So it's like a, a sock that somebody's holding and whenever you whenever you swing it it ends up stretching like this. And that's what these little feet were doing on the Powerpuff Girl. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this. I digress. I, I, I'm trying to show you a concept of why I designed something because a lot of times you don't hear any of that, you know? It's like, here I did this, this, and this, and then I did this, and then this, this, and this, and you're like, wait a minute, I'm watching all of this and I have no idea what you're doing or what thought process is going in your brain. What the snap? So that's why I'm trying to get across to you is why I do the things I do, right? There's a bigger picture going on. All the artists do it. They just don't talk about it. It's like they, it's their thought, their inner thought process, you know? Okay, so come over here to this foot. As you see, every single time, so I'll press this button on my device and then I'll release it and it goes back to brush. And you're like, okay, that's really cool. So I'm painting, I'm painting, I'm painting, I'm painting, I'm painting. And then I move, and then I zoom out, and then I still have my finger on that right button. And what it does, it goes back to that. So irritating. Okay, so let's go back to brush. Okay, so I have to think. Now, I meant that kind of crossroads right now of the piece because I, I just fleshed this in really quickly and now I have to think okay so is this the bottom of the foot or is it the side of the foot or is it the top of the foot so I haven't worked that out yet so you're gonna see me work it out okay so let's go ahead and erase this okay you see I put some little patties on the feet Let's go ahead and draw maybe the toes are like this. I don't know. This is all just it's probably gonna have a club foot. Ah <laughs> Okay, so let's do this. Let's go okay. You're seeing me struggle. For all the things that I've done and the, all the capability and all the projects that I've worked on, one of the things that I still literally have some challenges with, and it's something that I work on continuously. I work on feet continuously. It's not the construction of the foot. It's, it's drawing it in different angles and different poses. And it's not a human foot per se. It's animal feet trying to be anthropomorphic, kind of have human characteristics. So yeah, I have some challenges. So please give me a break, man. Give me a break. 
<clears throat> now, am I sure this is what it's supposed to look like? No. <laughs> that, you know, I'm not going to stress about it right now. I want to get back to the other parts of the illustration, so I'm going to zoom out. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not where I want to be. And also, I'm going to show you something that a lot of artists don't show and talk about, and that's called a tangent. And this is really close to being one. A tangent is whenever you have two um, elements, two forms, that are on different planes of existence. So the tail is further back than the foot. The foot is going to be in front of that tail. So if I were to actually do this, you're going to see what happens. If I were to actually do this, what inadvertently happens is that touching right there puts them on the same plane of existence. So we don't want to do that. We don't like tangents. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that claw a little bit smaller, right, to help out what is going on. A little bit smaller. Okay. Got that patty right there. Patty, patty. All right. Okay, zooming in. This device that I'm using, this, this, uh, Neo device is fascinating. It's it's so great in its in its design and execution. It's just me. It's user error. Yeah, see now I'm feeling it. See this is a little bit better. Let's see, okay. Nope. So this is what I'm gonna do. Watch. So as I'm looking at this. I'm thinking and feeling how I would feel in this position. It's very important you do this as artists because it puts you in that position of what you're drawing, right? And it helps you understand placement and where things are supposed to live. And personally, I don't think that's where that's supposed to live. So I've cut and pasted it. This, this line right here that goes like this, you can't see it, but it's an invisible line. It's an invisible line that you can't see. I'm an idiot. So you go here, and you and it's literally, it's like a rhythm and flow. You can feel that flow coming down. So I want it to be, I want it to be right about there. You know, I might even have it. I might even have it like that. Let's see what that looks like. That looks jacked. See there, uh, Mr. Catman, Mr. Catman do. What'd you do to your foot there, uh? Looks like you bent it to the side. I kid. Okay, so still not where I want it. See, again, I have to determine this area right here is being pulled, and I have to think, okay, am I going to show a big part of that foot? I don't know. Okay. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And you know what? If it, if it doesn't work and it doesn't gel, then I'll fix it. Okay, so I've got this particular sketch. I've got this sketch on its own layer now. So I'm going to go in and just put a few details. I'm not going in and rendering it because that is going to be for another... That's going to be for another time, another video. This is just supposed to show the beginning of this particular piece and what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now... Oh, I'll go ahead and add a layer underneath. How I did that was I went and I pressed Command and this little button down here, and it puts the layer below instead of on top. By default, Photoshop puts it on top. Because Photoshop likes it on top. That was uncalled for, sir, and I apologize. So, 
this, what I'm doing right now, as I talk to you, is just simple. Very simple background elements. Right? I actually liked my initial sketch, so I don't want to deviate too far from that. You know, I actually like all that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do, you, you hear it coming. I'm gonna put you on time-lapse. I'm gonna put you on time-lapse and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flesh out some of these foreground elements because again, listen, Illustrators and artists are architects. We're builders. We build worlds and the things that we want you to see, that's what you're going to see. You know, we don't want to put details where details don't matter because that is a waste of time. And time is what? Time is a interesting construct of matter versus particulate versus human existence. No, time is money. <laughs> time is moolah. Mula mula. Whether you realize it or not, even if you're doing something like this, which is for fun, there's still money involved. And you're like, you're dumb. You're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. Fun is fun. No, because this time that I'm spending doing this could be spent doing other things. So what is the return I'm going to get on this particular time? Well, this particular time will be spent doing the video and hopefully I'll make some monetary return from the video. Not a lot, but some. Then there's the marketing standpoint. So I'll be posting this on the internet and sharing it and hopefully getting some recognition and it goes into the Google algorithm. So that's another return. And the most important return, of course, is self improvement. I love self-improvement. <clears throat> Continually self-improve, whether it be through a tutorial or a simple sketch or exercise like this. And I'm just showing you and inviting you into my world to let you hear and understand how I think and process the information whenever I'm drawing. And hopefully you get something Okay, that was fun. Okay, let's put you on time.
Okay, so I wanted to stop for a minute, the time lapse, and kind of go through exactly where we're at uh, currently in the illustration uh, concept. So, if you guys remember, I started out with my initial sketch, very rough, a lot of um, action lines through it, just so I can get an understanding of form. It helps me whenever I go in and I start putting in light. Let's go full tilt here. I'm going to show you through the layers um, exactly what's going on. So, um, what I did was I went ahead and put this on a transparency. Typically, I like 35%. Then I went in and started blocking in local color. Um, local color basically is the color that is... Uh, actually, I went, I went ahead and I did the rough sketch. Oops, wrong one. Not rough sketch, the tighter sketch. Now, you notice that I didn't do a lot of stuff around here. Um, I pretty much only did... Let me see if I can find it. I only did the foreground because I want the background to be sort of um, less detailed. So I don't want to put the same amount of detail up here and on him back there because there's distance relationship. Things in the background will be less detailed. So I started blocking in some local color. So I put in the orange and then I layered the white on top of it, the white gray color that uh, Edgar is, and then I went in and start putting in some of his accessories. There's his eyes, and of course, in the foreground, I put in his, actually, did I just move that? I put in the foreground element, so it gives it a nice base, and you can see as I move my cursor across, all the action is pointing from right to left, and I've off-centered him slightly, and you don't have anything really on those, um, you know, in the center. So I, I use what's called the rule of thirds in an illustration of photography. Rule of thirds has to do with this invisible grid that is present in my brain as I start doing composition. So you see, even though we do have the bulk of him in the center, I do have areas of cross-section where these lines intersect and I've got some areas that are of interest. So like right here, his face is just barely touching this intersection right here. And I've got things in, in the quadrants of the grid. So just so you understand how my brain works, this kind of is like the, bat, the, the uh, launching place and I've got a lot of tension right here in that lower right hand corner and everything is launching in this direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that being said, let's go ahead and get rid of this. I'm comfortable with where the composition's at right now. Now what I'm going to end up doing, and this is just kind of in the forethought because I came back at this, I let it simmer and sit for a while and that's important you guys do that too. You know, this is not a uh, quote-unquote project for me to do with a deadline. So I, I hit it occasionally, I'll sketch on it for 10 minutes and then I'll come back to it. But what I noticed is this big open area right here. So I came back and I noticed a big open area. Now I do have this right here, which is in this open area. However, I want to be sure and have maybe some plants in the distance because I have this rock right here and I like this shape you can see this, and again, I have all these elements in the background that I don't really want to show up too much. And this big rock right here is here to kind of balance this whole blob shape. I'm, I'm telling you guys all this because this is, this is in the thought process of an artist and illustrator as we move through the composition and we develop the illustration as we go. You know, I did an initial thumbnail, which was my sketch, which I have back here. And as I move, move through, I'm, I'm slowly 
getting that process and, and what I really want to accomplish in the illustration. Now, things can change. I might completely change. I might, you know, make the larger, you know, it might be larger. I don't know. But right now, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's going. But like I said, this area right here, every single time I come into this illustration, I can feel it. It's, it's one of those feelings when you look at it and you've seen enough illustrations in, the, in, in your time <coughs> and you look at it and go, I just, I, I want to put something here, but I don't know what it is. I originally, you know, had a house right here, you know, and I had this maybe a pathway leading here and then it went up. Maybe I had a valley, you know, I had a mountain over here. But I wanted it to be kind of desolate. I didn't want it to be too busy. And if you notice how I just did that, I'm using this shape, these shapes, and this mountain, and also how I curved the walkway coming up. They're there to frame him. Right? They're there to frame him um, and help you kind of work through the illustration with your eyeballs, you know? So I might put some, you know, stuff here. And then we'll have stuff here. And even doing that just helps balance it a little bit better. But again, I haven't decided yet. And we'll have stuff here. Yeah, put it on the wrong layer. That's hilarious. Let's try that again. <laughs> so, yeah, something in my brain goes, did you check to make sure? I know you pressed it, but... And even how I'm doing this, you notice like this right here branch will, will help reaffirm that direction. And then maybe I have a curve here. So a curve here, then I'll have an opposing curve here. We have a curve here, so maybe I'll do an opposing curve here. All that helps to balance. But again, I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to put you guys again back on time lapse, and I'm going to go ahead and flesh out some of those ideas. And just so you guys know, like the local color, I, I, Edgar's outfit has stripes on it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do. So I sampled the color using my eyedropper, and I get the base color. Now I want it, it's a, his outfit's a little um, tonal. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. And I'm going to press my Alt key. And then that becomes a layer mask. So basically anything I draw, I don't have to worry about it going outside of the parameters of the layer below. So let's go ahead and get rid of taper. I'm going to go back. I changed the hardness. Yeah, that's what I wanted. What I was going to say is I changed the hardness of my pen today because I didn't like the fact that it didn't have a lot of pressure sensitivity, but now I'm so used to drawing the other way, I'm like, ah! Okay. So that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in very loose. And if you notice, I'm not going in and doing this. I'm not doing, you know. What is it doing now? Okay. I ordered a new computer, so you guys know, I'll do a review on it. I got, I ordered a new M1 Mac just because this one is so old. So hopefully whenever I get it in, some of these weird issues that are happening with this machine, you know, like whenever I draw, the fan comes on and it's just old. I mean, it's seven years old. The operating system doesn't even support it anymore. So that being said, let's go ahead and put you guys back on time lapse and um, I'll come back and kind of explain what you guys saw in the process. Um, you know, I might even do a, a narration over the time lapse so you guys can kind of feel what I'm feeling as I progress through the illustration, like this right here. Yeah, and then it comes here, wraps around. Yeah, I'm trying to reaffirm, reconfirm and reaffirm that form factor. And I'm being loose on purpose, because whenever I start putting in my shadowing, a lot of these this detail is not going to really matter. Of the stripes, they're just going to be part of the fabric. Right? Okay. So, I mean, you can adjust the opacity down. That's pretty good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and merge 13 and 8. 
I'm going to have Command, and I'm going to press down Command, and then hit E. Actually, i got to select those two. There we go. And then that merges the two layers together. And now we have Happy, Happy Day. So let's go ahead and add a layer. Again, Alt. Turns that into a layer mask. So we're going to select that color. And Edgar has some of these wonderful little items in here. These are not shadows. I am not doing any shadows right now. These are variations in his fur. Let's go ahead and turn taper on. Yep, turn taper off. Variations in his fur, similar to what a, you would see in a tiger, a white tiger. But again, he's not a tiger. He's just a cat. Feline species. I'm going light right now just because I don't, you know, I want to give an overlay. It's kind of like a, a sketch per se. And then I'll come back with a darker, heavy hand. Yeah. This gives you a little bit better understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish here, hopefully. And he's got these darker tips. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I had hurt my wrist a while back, probably about three months. It might have been from bike riding, might have been from work around the farm, I'm not really sure. But I've been dealing with it and it progressively has gotten worse and worse and worse and I started wearing a brace, a hand brace, and the positioning of my hand whenever I draw, it's brutal, it hurts. I'm pretty sure it's the tendonitis on my wrist. There's a tendon that goes right behind that bone, right on, um, you know, right behind my thumb. And man, whew, some days, eek, it hurts. Okay, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. And I haven't even put any of the shadows in yet. You know, really abstain and try hard, oh, my wrist is killing me, and try hard not to put those shadows in just yet because I, I, I haven't decided exactly what kind of lighting I want yet. I do have an eye shine right here, but that's just to establish <clears throat> and help me give an idea of form in his eyeball, and it helps him give it a little bit more life. Now, if I do have that shine right here, then obviously the light's going to be really prevalent in that direction, so it'll be lateral and off the canvas. So whenever I do the actual uh, lighting, you know, we're going to have shadows over here. It's going to be shadowed here. <coughs> and then we're going to have a lot of shadows over here. So that being said, you know, again, we're not doing shadowing. I'm really, I want to do shadows, but we're not. So just a little flex here and there. There we go. Excellent day. And of course his tail, we're going to have that dark, I want that dark. Okay, Oop, I forgot to do that, how dare me, select, I think I noticed it last time, let's go ahead and do that in, little fur, and I'm following that, again that form pattern in my brain and how his foot is constructed. Sorry it's been a little while since I've done a video. I meant to apologize for that. I've, I've added a new client and it's, you know, I've been doing a lot of really intricate vector work and, and whatnot. And it's it's been a challenge because it's very labor intensive so I, I haven't had the opportunity to make a drawing video my apologies for that and we did reach 10,000 subscribers Woo so I'll be doing a store adding a store just like I said and adding tutorials and everything else you know and hopefully you guys will get something out of it okay so now I'll change the color down to dark and I'll go back with taper on because that taper again gives like a fur you can see it's a skinny and the harder I press 
the larger it goes and darker it goes. So let's get you guys back on time lapse and then we'll stop. Let's save. We'll stop and um, once I get all the local color blocked in and kind of an idea of maybe some vegetation on the left and the right, I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Anyway, enjoy the time lapse.
where I wanted to land with this today. As always, go out and draw something fun, enjoy what you do, and by all means, when you need to, just take a break. Have a great day, guys. See you soon. Bye.